Now let's compare marginal product to average product. Average product increases as long as marginal product is greater than it. So for example, if our next unit of labor increases total product by 10, and the current average product of labor is only 8, then average product will increase with that unit of labor, because that next worker is more productive than our average worker right now. When marginal product of labor equals average product of labor, then APL will be at its maximum, because once marginal product is below average product, average product of labor starts to decrease. Okay, so now we know what production curves look like. Now let's take a look at the cost of production. There's two types of costs we need to be familiar with here, fixed costs and variable costs. And the sum of fixed and variable costs will be total costs. Fixed costs are the costs that remain the same regardless of the amount of output that we produce. So a coffee shop's store lease will be the same regardless of how much coffee is being made or being sold. Variable costs, on the other hand, are costs that change depending on the amount of output. So for example, for a coffee shop, we're going to be using less coffee beans if we sell less coffee, and we use more coffee beans if we sell more coffee. So that coffee bean cost will be a variable cost. So now that we know what fixed and variable costs are, we can calculate a bunch of different things. We can calculate average total costs as the total cost divided by the number of units produced. In the same way, we can calculate average variable cost and average fixed cost by dividing the variable cost and fixed cost by the number of units as well. Just like how total cost is equal to fixed cost plus variable cost, the average per unit cost can also be added up the same way. Average total cost is equal to average variable cost plus average fixed cost. Finally, we have marginal cost, which is the additional cost of producing one extra unit of output. Mathematically, that's going to be the change in total cost divided by the change in units produced. If we're a coffee shop here, then our marginal cost tells us how much extra cost we're going to incur to make our next cup of coffee. And then, as a producer, we can decide if we want to make that cup of coffee or not. Now let's figure out what our cost curves look like. So we first graph out our product curves and then derive the cost curves from there. First, let's take a look at marginal cost. Marginal cost is inversely related to marginal product of labor because it's simply the labor wage divided by marginal product plus other per unit material costs. So the curve will look something like this. In the same way, average variable cost and average product of labor are inversely related. Labor wage divided by the average product of labor plus other per unit material costs gives us average variable costs. So the curve looks like this. Okay, so now that we have marginal cost and average cost, let's look at the cost curves more closely. Compared to marginal cost, average variable cost is decreasing as long as marginal cost is below the average variable cost. So when marginal cost intersects AVC, that's going to be the average variable cost minimum point. After that, marginal cost will rise above average variable cost, and then the average variable cost curve starts to increase as well. Next is average total cost, which is just average variable cost plus a fixed amount, which is the average fixed cost. So the curve will look identical to average variable cost, but just a little bit higher. And it follows the same principles as AVC when compared to marginal cost. It falls until the marginal cost intersects it, and then it rises. And lastly, average fixed cost is just the fixed amount that decreases as more units are produced. So for example, as a coffee shop produces and sells more and more coffee, they can divide their store's lease cost over more and more units, and it gets closer and closer to zero, but actually never reaches it. So in summary, we have now graphed out our production and cost curves for a firm in the short run. Because of diminishing marginal returns after a certain point, our production will first increase and then decrease, and conversely, for our cost curves, they'll first decrease and then increase. Next video, we're going to discuss firm production costs in the long run.